Brand new Illinois Congressman Bobby Rush is calling for a halt to the deportation of Haitian refugees. Thousands of Haitian migrants encamped in Del Rio, Texas, are being sent back to their homeland right now. That's after the U.S. border officials launched mass removal flights at locations near the U.S.-Mexico border. And joining us to discuss the mass expulsion of Haitians in Texas are Mark Schuler, professor of anthropology and nonprofit and NGO studies at Northern Illinois University. Schuler has covered natural disasters and other issues in Haiti extensively. Chris Weikert, executive director of Hope for Haitians. And Emmanuel Mardi Gras, a native of Haiti's capital, Port-au-Prince, who now resides in northern Indiana. And we welcome all of you here to Chicago tonight. Uh, Emmanuel, I'll start with you. Uh, you came to the U.S. only a few months ago after the assassination of ha Haiti's president. Uh, your thoughts on what's happening at the border of uh, Texas and Mexico right now? Hi, everyone. Uh, what I'm thinking about what happened there uh, is... Um, I know my Haitian brothers and sisters are illegally trying to cross the border to get to the States, but uh, I would say in the same way, the United States didn't think it well by sending them back to Haiti because the country is already upside down. By sending those people down back, uh, it's going to make it worse in Haiti because, uh, as I was mentioned before, there was a insecurity and kidnapping, hunger. People are not being able to eat a plate of food in Delhi, so this is going to be worse, worse, and worse. It's a crisis situation in Haiti and one that you escaped, uh, Emmanuel. And uh, Chris Weikert, give us the backstory. Why has the encampment uh, at the border grown so big now? Well, you know, what's, what's challenging for us is that uh, not being an immigration expert, um, the backstory on that has kind of had to be filled in by others. Our primary work is directly in Haiti, creating conditions where there's not a need to leave as best we can in the communities that we serve. So I don't know that I can answer the why it is as bad as it is. Um, our work has mostly been to prevent uh, the need to flee Haiti. And, uh, and Mark Schuler, um, remind us uh, of the situation that Emmanuel was talking about back in Haiti right now. Um, how how in peril are uh, deportees? Uh, well, thank you for, the, for having me and thanks for the question. I think before we answer the question of, of why it's bad for people in Haiti, we need to ask what got us there. Um, so there was a natural disaster, natural event, uh, August 14th, two earthquakes as powerful as the 2010 earthquake struck the south of Haiti. Um, so we're seeing of 2 million people that are food insecure right now. Um, this is on top of uh, the July 7th assassination attempt, which was part and parcel of a, of a string of, of uh, disasters that are um, have as much to do with, with U.S. foreign policy and uh, the role that Haiti is given in the world economy as it is in Haitian leadership. Uh, so the current government uh, is basically the replacement for the assassination, but it's the same par political party, the political party that was empowered by uh, U.S. intervention in 2010, uh, tipping the scales in favor of the balance of uh, then President M Michel Martelly in 2011, um, looked the other way when there was a opportunity to hold elections and did not, and um, having uh, elections in 2016 following another natural disaster, Hurricane Matthew, and every step of the way, uh, the international community sided with a what was clearly going to become an authoritarian government and but so we need to be thinking about you know not just how bad is it over at haiti but you know really what the what the core roots of the crisis are so it's a p political and human uh, humanitarian crisis um uh, earlier secretary uh of the homeland security alejandro mayorkas spoke on these flights uh taking folks back to haiti let's take a look we in dhs are securing additional transportation to accelerate the pace and increase the capacity of removal flights to Haiti and other destinations in the Western Hemisphere. We are working to increase the capacity of return flights to Haiti and other destinations. We anticipate at least one to three flights per day. Emmanuel Mardi Gras, a lot of um, refugees are coming from South America or Central America. They'd been living in places like Chile for a while. Um, why are they drawn uh, to the U.S. border if they had sought asylum in some of these other countries? Uh, mostly what happened is 
they are in Chile and Brazil and other country over there. But uh, the money that they're making is not even enough for them to survive, not even saying enough to send back to the family. Because us Haitian, what we do, let's say I am in the state now, working to get some money, but I will have to share it with people back there that not able to make a life, make a living. So every time they're trying to find where there is a better job in order to provide for their family back there, you can even see there is people with their own kids, but they would leave three or four kids behind. They would leave the mother, the brother, or, or even their wives or husband behind. They need to take care of them. So, so a lot of a lot of what you make being sent back uh, to your family in Haiti. Uh, Mark Weikert, what do you recommend uh, the U.S. do? You saw. Congressman Bobby Rush, as we mentioned at the top, uh, calling for a halt to these deportations. Well, one of the, I think one of the big challenges in this kind of really humanitarian crisis is the fact that uh, the question of, so what's the plan when they arrive in Haiti? Um, we spent, I spent a lot of time today in contact with individuals on the ground there to ask what they knew about what is happening when they arrive. Where do they go? Um, where are they going to stay? Uh, we're, we're dealing with a situation where on August 14th, about a little over 50,000 homes were destroyed and another 70,000 people's homes were made un, unlivable. Um, and so with a already a housing and food crisis, we're now talking about sending thousands of people back into a country. And, and it doesn't seem to be that there's a plan, um, that there's not a plan on the other end. It seems to be a little bit of we're taking a problem that's in our, our backyard and giving it to somebody, giving it back to somebody else, and then I suppose wiping our hands of it. But from our perspective, the issue is really a big question of humanitarian issues. What are we going to do? What are we going to do to help those who are there? And, and Mark Schuler, I mean, groups, uh, NGOs, the Red Cross uh, have stated that they are on the ground in Haiti helping out. What is the situation in our NGOs also at the border helping out migrants? I mean, it, it's, at some point they're going to be able to be deployed, but this is the situation, you know, to, to echo what, what um, Emmanuel had said about why people are coming, but why Brazil in particular? Brazil was in charge of the UN mission, uh, the military mission, the MINUSCA, uh, and they, was an, they invited people from Haiti because there was a labor shortage. They were going to have the World Cup and the Olympics the same year in 2016. So once those stadiums were built and the, the change in government, um, where you have now a, a nationalist right of center anti-immigrant government in Brazil, uh, the, the signs were there that people were no longer welcome. So yes, people are on the ground in Haiti. Um, the, the, the issue is about uh, capacity. The issue is about what, you know, what tools they're having at their disposal. People are, are not able to, I mean, in the South and the Grand Dance, the earthquake impacted. People are still, as was mentioned, without homes. Uh, there's still, there's still very much an issue of trying to have a needs assessment and try to coordinate aid when you have roads that are blocked. And so when you, when you throw gas in a fire, you know, you know, it's just going to get worse. Um, and so what is, that, what is possible on the ground is, is a question that is not, a, it's not a technical one. It's, it's, it's a moral one. It, it, it's um, the, the United States is signatory to the Geneva convention. We, we are, um, we're doing things that we're not supposed to be doing. This is not, uh, this is not correct in the eyes of uh, international law. All right. Well, the, the, a lot to keep following here. And our thanks to Mark Schuler, Chris Weikert, and Emmanuel Mardi Gras. Thank you so much for joining us.